to that interview. But right now, let's talk about rape. Now, today is the 25th of November, and annually, um, it is set aside to mark International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women. And so the theme for this year is um, Orange the World, and we'll talk about that even further. But there's not they call this one Orange Your Campus. I'm wondering what Orange even stands for in the first place, but I know that discussion is centered around rape and sexual violence. And so we'll be taking a look at that in detail. And in the studios, back again on the show, I have Robert Akuto Amwafo. He's the country director for Amnesty International Ghana. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. It was just morning. on what, Friday or Thursday when yes. we had the issue, yes. the conversation about yes. witchcraft. Which, and you're yes. back again, yes. <laughs> championing another thing. Yes. So first of all, tell me, um, what is the main theme? for the celebration of International Day um, for Elimination of Violence Against Women. So, um, as you mentioned, um, this marks um, International Day Against um, Gender-Based Violence yeah. across the world. Mm. And this year is Orange Your World um, Generation Equality Stands Against RIP. Okay. Uh, so, the generation equality just goes back to the SDGs, mm. where we are standing for equality okay. um, amongst all. Mm. So, um, this year we are looking at RIP, and we are looking at the issue of sexual um, violence against women. All right. And um, because it has become a very topical issue um, across the globe. Yeah. Yeah. You heard about the um, Hear Me Too campaign exactly. and all of that. Yeah. And so it's important that we highlight those ideas so that people will get to know more mm -hmm. and get to understand why we need to hold these campaigns. All right. So that's what orange stands for. I'm just curious about what orange exactly <laughs> is. It's just to get attention. The okay. color, it, is, it was chosen by the UN. Uh -huh. You know, it's so I think it started last year was Orange Your World. Yeah. And then, so Orange Your World, then they add other things so that people, right. it becomes a very um, bright thing okay. that people will get their attention. But your campaign is based on campuses. Yes. Tell me why that. So, um, as you may be aware, the BBC um, documentary that came out yeah. mentioned the issue of sexual um, abuse. Sexual grace, uh, yes, yeah. sexual yeah. grace and sexual abuse on campuses. Um, we heard a little more um, on other campuses. Okay. So UDS also came out with mm. one. So other campuses started there talking. There was UCCK UC, and USC. Yes, yes. There were so, names that were flying about. Exactly, and yeah. lecturers who were being identified. Yeah. So we saw the need to partner with the French um, embassy, which is very, very interested in ensuring that this um, campaign goes far, um, to advance the discussion, okay. especially amongst students. Mm. Because this, as we're talking now, everything mm. that's going on is very high level yeah. about setting up a committee mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm, of that. Mm -hmm. But what about the students? Okay. The main people who here are the victims, what do they know? Okay. How are they going about addressing it amongst themselves? All right. So that is the aim of our campaign, to draw attention among students, to continue the discussion and use social media like how it has been done all over the world to champion the cause and stand against sex abuse against girls and women okay. on campuses. Okay. Are you saying, from what I'm, you're saying, I'm inferring that mm -hmm. you're saying that we, we haven't handled the issue of sexual abuse on campus very well? Is that what you're trying to say? Looking at what happened and what it was, was being discussed, yeah. it looks like, like I mentioned, everything is very high level. Yeah. It's about getting the people punished and mm -hmm. also um, getting the news out that we've done something about it. But we've left the victims out. But the university mentioned in their release that, mm -hmm. you know, there has been a, a committee, well, not a committee, but they have a session where you can actually go and report sexual mm -hmm. abuse against you know, students mm. on campus. So it always has been in existence, mm. but it wasn't amplified until the issue came up. And mm. so they had to draw attention to, um, you know, that faculty again. So mm. everybody knows that when I'm sexually abused or harassed, mm. there's a place I can go to that people who are willing to listen mm. to me. Yes. So there has been a conversation about that. Yes, so we are adding our voice. Okay. And then also the idea that we are saying that it's important that we bring it to the doorstep for the students. Mm. And this campaign is also saying that we are developing students. So this first campaign is developing 75 students okay. who will serve as peer uh, mentors or peer to support their, their colleague students who goes again who goes through any oh. sort of sexual violence so that if they if they have an issue they can help report to the system in the campus mm. support them through the processes so that they can report it and feel confident that they don't need to go to a system that is bigger than them okay they can talk to their colleague to get this resolved but how are you going to ensure that these students become you know the the peer influencers for mm. this particular campaign so today we are launching a campaign okay. and we are doing um, a, a workshop 
with them. All right. And then also we are supporting them through the 16 days um, with funding and also technical support mm. to develop activities on their campuses that they would run even after the 16 days. I see. Yeah, so that they would go to room to room, develop online themselves, develop online campaigns with all the support of Amnesty International and the French Embassy, with all the technical assistance and funding we can give to make sure that they continue doing that mm. and helping their colleagues on campus. I like that you're talking about this because there also has been another side of the conversation that says that some of these students mm. willingly offer themselves mm. to the lecturers and mm. all of that just because they want grades, mm. because they've refused to study on campus and they mm. think there's an easy way out. Yeah. And so what happens to those um, students or that aspect of the community mm. as well? Because uh, we're making it look like so it's only the authorities that are mm. guilty at this point because mm. the students are too vulnerable. So yes. somebody comes and says, I won't give you grades mm. if you don't mm. sleep with yeah. me. But there are students who are also mm. encouraging this kind of act. What mm. happens to those students as well? So this is a holistic education we are doing. Yeah. And in our campaign, we mentioned that we know that it's not only lecturers and authorities that do that, even amongst the students. Yeah. Their colleagues also sexually abuse them. I have been a witness of, um, of a young man who was sexually abusing a lady on campus. Mm. I mean, in their inner rooms and things like okay. that. And we had to follow up and report and all of that. So then the idea is that it is not only for saying that it's against authorities, but also amongst the students mm -hmm. and amongst themselves. And then also students who offer themselves. I mean, this would encourage a lecturer who's also facing any sorts of violence yeah. to report the case and to have access to communicate the issue and talk about it. Are we focusing only on students? Because I know rape and sexual violence is nationwide. It's yeah. a global thing. It happens yeah. in every corner. There are yeah. children who are being defiled yeah. on a daily basis as yeah. well. Yeah. We're empowering the youth, but yeah. what about the rest of the community? What about yeah. that woman in that corner who's been raped almost yeah. every day? by her husband, by her boyfriend? Mm. What about that man who is also being sexually abused? Even mm. though they say that a man cannot be raped, <laughs> but we do know that it could happen. Yes. What yes. about them? Are we not mm. leaving them out of the campaign, the conversation? Mm. Mm. No, we are not leaving anyone behind. Okay. Um, that I can assure you. The idea is that because this issue came up as a very topical issue, and we need to see how we address it mm. with, with our resources. So to say that there are other organizations doing other things. Okay. I, I, as I was coming here, I saw, I think, the UNFPA that had standing by the side with um, bruises like sort of um, 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 blue oh, bruises this morning and this morning yes on I the see. road sign with signs on them okay um, it's his wife and oh. that's so other com um, campaigns are ongoing okay. Um, okay and we want to focus on students, on students because we think that they are the most there's likely that people will forget them yeah and we don't want to forget them especially mm. with the issues that came around on campuses so what's the program looking because if you're launching the campaign today, mm. I believe it's an all-day event. Yes. So what is it going to look like? So this morning, we'll do the launching of the campaign where we'll have um, um, developing partners, the embassies, all of the dignitaries there to just launch the campaign mm -hmm. and talk about their commitment to ending um, gender and sexual um, violence. Okay. And then we'll have from the afternoon to the evening having a, a workshop for the students. Um, we have um, Dovsu coming okay. ourselves and other partners who are mm. going to teach these students in the law what is sexual abuse, mm. bodily integrity. When we say bodily integrity, what does it mean? What does it mean though? <laughs> <laughs> bodily integrity means that the space that you have, if I stretch my hand this way, yeah. Nobody can come into that space unless I've given that person um, permission. Oh. And I have the right to do whatever I want within the space I of see. my body. And nobody has um, the right to determine what I do within that space. So we have another campaign globally called My Body, My Right. My Body, My Right. Okay. So nobody can touch you without your permission. I nobody see. can come close to you. So even at work, sexual harassment, if somebody comes to and come and hug you mm -hmm. without your permission, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. touch your hair or anything like that, that goes against the bodily integrity, right. which all people right. must respect oh that's yes, interesting yes, i think yes, you should yes, teach yes, primary yes. kids as well <laughs> yes exactly um, you know because they yes. also need to know about i, yes. I didn't even know what body yes. integrity meant yes. until you yes. explained it but it would be nice to have our kids also understand mm. this as mm. well mm. and i hope you can extend this to them because sure. they need to know mm -hmm. what sexual violence is and how mm. they can protect themselves and how they can report as well yes. so you said you're working with dovsu on this right yes. so yes. if i'm sexually abused on mm. campus mm. can i go straight to dovsu or mm. do i still need to respect the li reporting lines mm. is there a structure on campus that will ensure that I report to the rights authorities there mm. and then if nothing happens I can ex escalate it to mm. Dovsu or to Amnesty. Yes so I, um, on campuses we are aware that there are structures and systems. Yeah. If the thing happened on campus and it is a campus-based um, um, issue then you need to go through the campus okay. processes okay. but we encourage people sometimes these systems keep too long mm. 
mm. and it's worrying. So sometimes you need a civil society organization by your side who will be monitoring and making sure that you've reported to these authorities how many days did they take, you know, if people know that others are watching them, they do something about it. Okay. I'm sure even in this case, because people know that we are all watching and we are waiting. That's so right. we always encourage students, if you report and you think that you need a second hand, you can call any civil society organization, yeah. Amnesty International, you can call Human Rights Advocacy Center, um, Do, um, um, Wildaf, um, Aula, all of them are women organizations, feminist organizations who are willing to support you through this process. So you should call on them to monitor. But if you don't hear anything, immediately report to DOFSU. Okay. And make sure that it is heard because once you, you know how some of these things happen, this Hear Me Too campaign mm -hmm. that came, it came because people can't report. They yeah. feel the systems within the place where they are are very limited and they can't report. So we always encourage people, don't wait. How are you going to sift between those who are telling the truth and those who are not? Because there mm. could be false accusations as mm. well. I mean, if we're encouraging people to speak, um, mm. you know, that means that anybody at all can just get up and accuse you. Mm. Uh, what, what is the system like to ensure that we don't end up falsely accusing people? People and maybe wrongfully mm. putting them behind bars or mm. something like that. We are encouraging everybody. I okay. mean, if you are in your office and you feel that there's a particular person who I have a, an office and the person comes there always and people see them, start putting measures in place. Because mm. apart from the fact that you could be a, a victim, you could be somebody who be accused wrongly. Exactly. So people should always also take care of themselves. I mean, if, if you're a man and there's a particular lady you see always around you and people see you together and all of that, that mm. make another person aware of what the relationship is okay. so that you don't get into trouble. And then also protect ourselves from any sort of harm that can come um, because of a false accusation. Mm. Especially knowing that the issue that I just mentioned about bodily integrity and the fact that the space. If I'm in my office and you come behind my desk, no, it is a boundary. Is that wrong? It's wrong for anybody to walk to, unless you've given the person permission. We are going back oh. to the bodily integrity thing. If somebody, if you have a desk and somebody walks, come and stand by you without your permission, you saying, oh, you can come, that is wrong. What if you're very familiar with the person and, you, you know, you've built a relationship to that point where they can easily walk to you and talk to you? <laughs> then, then you should make it clear to everybody. Everybody should know that that is how it is. Because ah. tomorrow somebody can say, they, you know, there's give evidence. Oh, yes, every day I see them together. I see that he walks by the mm. table. So it could be true that maybe when she stands by him, he puts his hand under something. Okay. You never okay. know. So you okay. should always make it clear that it is a familiar relationship. I didn't ask the person to come and stand there, mm. you know, so that nobody reads any meanings into that. I see. The, the, men, <laughs> the men are complaining that this is making it very difficult for them to be very cordial with yes. ladies because yeah. now I have to be careful. Exactly. You never know who is going to say exactly. you're sexually harassing me mm -hmm. or abusing me mm -hmm. or stuff like mm -hmm. that. Are we mm -hmm. not scaring the men away? I think it's just a caution for everybody to be careful. Mm. You know, that for instance, some people, I remember when I was on campus, I was listening of hugging, you know, yeah. that everybody, you just hug and hug. Now you no. can't even hug anybody again. Everybody yes. comes and says hello. Because hello, I shake your hand and stay yeah. apart. Yes, because the idea, we want people to respect other people's spaces. Yeah. So we know, you know, there were etiquettes that were put in place. Mm -hmm. If it's a lady, let her offer the hug. A lady must offer a hug, not a gentleman going in for it. That oh. those are the it's basic etiquette, yes. Mm. That even if the handshake is a lady who stretches and says, I want to give you a handshake, and you take it, okay. and even the, the, the um, pressure on even giving a handshake, all of that are supposed to be limited so that you don't shake a lady for too long and shake and shake. And you know, we have this thing where people <laughs> put their middle finger in the person's, yeah, that thing is very things. irritating, yes. All That's those abuse, things. it's an abuse. It's a sex, it's sexual harassment. You don't have to do anything. What does it mean when someone shakes your hand and, you know, puts the finger Why would you put the finger there? Oh, maybe one of my finger <laughs> shakes a lot, so I'm shaking. But what does it mean when someone does that? I mean, all we, we know commonly, locally, we know it is an intimate thing to say, I like you or yeah. I, I, want, I want more than just a handshake with you. Ah. And we don't want that to continue. If somebody does that... Especially for, for ladies, let the person know I am not interested. But what if a lady does it to a guy? My producer says I harassed him last week because I did that. I don't even remember if that's happened. But what if a lady does it? That's also yes, an that's indication also, yes, that I want something a little you more. You want more, yes. So then you should make it clear. Then the person who you're doing it to should either make it clear to you that I am not interested or you should make it clear. It's just a, it's just a fun it's thing. It's winking sexual harassment. It depends on how you do it. You know, I mean, how it, you you do it have how? To be, you, <laughs> if it's consistent and the person does not welcome it. It is harassment. Hey. If you wink and the person looks away and you keep on winking, it is harassment. I see. 
So we need to be careful. Yes, even if you if you touch somebody in a particular way, if you say certain things in a particular way. So if I come and say, "Hi, ah, you're beautiful. I like your hair." It's enough. Thank you. Go. Okay, okay. I Don't you continue. You know, pushing and pushing. You know, it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. You know that you keep on mentioning. Ah, I like your dress. Thank you, especially if it's End between. It yeah. But don't continue again and again. Then it's, it's becoming it's harassment. It's hugging too tight also. You know, where they hug you and they squeeze you and all of that. Yes. So it is. It is. If it is not a familiar <laughs> relationship between the two of you, then it is. Especially if it's not welcomed by the one party. You know, if you hug the person, the person is trying to get off and you keep on hugging, it's not welcomed. What, what if you tell a pregnant woman she's looking sexy? You don't use sexual connotation words unless the, you have a familiar relationship with the person. You know, anything, you know, sexual harassment is so pervasive. If you don't take care, you will get into spaces that you don't want to. Yeah. Somebody can report you that you, ha you are harassing them and you go and these are the things that the person will be saying against you. Mm -hmm. It's only in Ghana and especially in our part of the world where we don't really talk about sexual, sexual harassment, harassment and the issue of sex. My producer you know? is harassing me. <laughs> AJ, he says I'm looking sexy. I'm reporting you. <laughs> I am reporting. But there's no law against sexual harassment in Ghana. It's only against rape. And yes. Empowerment. I mean, there are, there are certain policies and laws that we can go to, I mean, to take care. And we know we encourage people in their workplaces to make these policies available, especially, and make it visible. Mm. You don't just only put this in the policy and say it is there. Make it visible. Make attempts to educate people about it ah. so that they are aware mm. that this is how we address sexual harassment. Because some people are facing sexual harassment at their workplace and they don't know even their policies yeah, that they can use true. against people who are sexually harassing true. them. Or even the processes that exist you know and also we encourage people to set up um, support groups you know yeah. find people who are very welcoming that people normally go to so that they can go and report such issues to if you put it that it's the HR and some people are not comfortable yeah. going to yeah. HR you yeah. know so all these things are very important to address sexual and gender-based violence I see where's this, where's this forum happening and um, it's happening at University of Ghana okay. um, at the Institute of African um, Studies and um, conference room this and today, morning. This morning. What yes. time does it end? It ends at so the 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 launch is starting at nine okay. and ending at um to eleven. Okay, okay. And then from twelve on, we have the we workshop. Have other. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, yes. I, I yes. entreat you to be yes. there, and I yes. hope yes. a lot of students on campus will make sure. time sure. Uh, to attend yes. as well. You're yes. hoping to train what seventy five students, students on various campuses. Have yes. you selected the campuses yet? No, we just uh, Accra for okay, Accra, just and, Accra. Yes, okay. and then any other any tertiary institution, mm. even if it is um, not a university, uh, we okay. are, we welcome everyone. But eventually, you extend it to the yes. other regions yes. as well. Yes, to the other regions. All right. So don't feel left out because it will be your turn soon. But I've been speaking to Robert. Akota Mwafo, he's the country director for Amnesty International Ghana and it's all about Orange Your Campus and this is a fight against sexual violence um, and also sexual abuse as well. Uh, much later we'll be speaking to Portia Gabo who won the best female journalist of the year and best transport and road safety um, journalist um, award at the 24th Ghana Journalist Association. Also um, we had Peter Kwao Adato winning the best sports reporter as well.